First, we will pay homage to the lineage gurus, to the Venerable Mangyami, to Master Sakya Zengkong, to the 16 Dhamma King Kamapa, and Master Tukten Taoji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar and to the main deity of the Kala Chakra today, the Kala Chakra Hindu. Sumo, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma assistants, all disciples present here and over the webcast. And to our guests of honors today, we don't have notes on the names of our guests of honors. Okay. Can you hear now? Okay. Okay, I will try. Focus here. Focus here. Okay. Okay. So from the Zen Ministry of Taiwan, Ambassador Liao and Mrs. Liao, and my sister Judy. From Academia Seneca of Taiwan, Professor Tu and Mrs. Tu. And from the CTI TV in Taiwan, the producer, Dharma Sister Rebecca Su. And the producers for the Platform Sutra and the Development Stages of Tantrayana, Dharma Virtual Master Lian Yi. And the president of the Chiyong Company and the inventor of the electronic cigar, Ms. Dickman. Dharma Bhagavad Gita. And the representative of the two Chinas and also the Chief Secretary of the Charitable Foundation, Ms. Stephen. And the Secretary of the uh, Buddhist, uh, Tantra Buddhist Association of Taiwan. And also the Secretary, uh, Secretaries of the uh, Tantra Buddhist Associations of Taiwan. Dhamma Brothers, and you can also applaud for yourselves because every one of us that can be here for the Chakra ceremony is a guest of honor. Today, I would like to introduce this card that I'm wearing. It is made of gold. And it is a mantra card of Kala Chakra, the Kala Chakra mantra. And at the back side, it's the seal of the Master Dukdan Daoji. The mantra came from my lineage guru, Master Dukdan Daoji. And this is a gold mantra card that was given to Master Lian Hua Pien. Please stand up, Master Lian, from Hong Kong. 
这个十论金刚，黄金的十论金刚，做牌。So this Kalachakra mantra that was made of gold came from Master Dipton Dorji. And Master Dipton Dorji said, when Guru Master is spreading the Kalachakra Dharma practice in the five continents throughout the world, and for the last ceremony in London, England, that this Kalachakra mantra that was embellished with 108 diamonds and then used 108 crystal beads. As a necklace, and ask this master to offer it to Grand Master Lu. As the last lineage item, so this is the last lineage item. So this mantra court made of gold was from Master Dipton Dorji and Master Pelon made them into a necklace and offered it to me. So I'm very grateful to my little speaker, Master Dipton Dorji and also to Master Pelon. So, Master Dutton Dorji had left the world and he instructed that when Grand Master Lu had conferred uh, the last Kala Chakra ceremony in the five continents, this is as a remembrance to my lineage guru, Master Dukdan Dorji, and this is also the last lineage item for Master Dukdan Dorji. So here, I'm also very grateful to the Venerable Mang Yaoming, Master Sakya Zhengkong, the 16th Dharma King Kamapa, and Master Duk Dengaji. So that when the Gurus care for his disciples, and the disciples are always mindful of the Gurus sitting on top of our heads, and we should be mindful at any moment, mindful of our Guru. And when the Gurus are thinking of his disciples, they instructed again and again, like to Master Pei that at the last Kala Chakra ceremony, that this lineage item had to be offered to Grand Master Lu. So this is longings both ways from Grand Master toward his Root Guru and my Root Guru toward his disciple. So this is called the heart-to-heart -heart connection, like the hot sun. So that is the true sun in my heart. And for us in the Dutton lineage, there is a lineage holder, Dutton City. 
with someone that I called out, the one that will continue to propagate Tantric Buddha Dharma in the future, and the lineage will continue from gurus to disciple, and then the disciple to his disciple, and the lineage will continue. So today, thank you for your coming. to the Ambassador Liao. Thank you very much. And also the inventor of the electronic cigarette. We have met before in Taiwan. The cigarette is quite interesting. These days it's common to be no smoking, but the electronic cigarette has no caffeine, but there is a, f a smoke to this electronic cigarette, and a feel as if smoking a cigarette. And it has different flavors, too. We have met before. So, this cigarette, or in Japanese we call it tobacco, Japanese loves to smoke, and also the mainland Chinese loves to smoke and drink. You came from mainland China, right? So hopefully people smoke electronic cigarette instead of uh, real cigarettes. And there will be a big market in mainland China. We have many guests of honors here. I recognize all of them. If not in this life, it's from the past life. We are all one family. As we said that uh, the two Chinas across the street, we are all one family. That everyone are brothers and sisters, and 500 years ago we were one family. That's a common saying in China. That across the four oceans we were brothers, and 500 years ago we were one family. Not just 500 years ago, even long, long ago we came from the same origin. So Kalachakra taught us how to attain Buddhahood the way to attain Buddhahood. From an ordinary person directly to attain Buddhahood. So attaining Buddhahood in this body, so this body can transform into rainbow light and directly attain Buddhahood. Or attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime, you can transcend life and death and attain Buddhahood directly. The uh, for the 
Chinese, uh, the over overseas overseas Chinese or from Taiwan. Long time ago, there was a Japanese that went to Taiwan to learn Chinese, and we have a Japanese master. Please sit down. Long time ago, there was a Japanese that went to Taiwan to learn Chinese. And he could not only speak Chinese, also Taiwanese and Hakanese. And he had no accent whatsoever. And he thought that no one would know that he was a Japanese. And one day, he met a, an old lady, and he spoke in Chinese. In Taiwanese, do you know where I came from? And the old lady said, I couldn't know from your accent. And the Japanese felt very pleased. He thought his Taiwanese was so good. And then the old lady said, If you could catch this two little fish, then I would know where you came from. And then the Japanese used the correct pronunciation to count that little fish. Until about until an hour later, until nine thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven, and then he said, "I guess you would never know where I came from." And then they said, "You must be Japanese." Because Taiwanese would never be so dumb, would never be so stupid to count that many fish. Sorry, Japanese master. Because the one who take the Bodhisattva vows earlier also came from Japan. Japanese, when they unite, they have great power. But one Taiwanese is smaller than many Japanese. And one mainland Chinese would win over many Japanese. So Chinese are very smart. That's why we have Chinatown all over the world. But we don't find Japan town very much. There are no Japanese towns. But the Chinese and for Taiwanese, there are always Chinatowns. So 
so the Chinese love to eat. So it's very few to find Japan towns. They do exist. And sometimes they call it the Sakura streets. But China towns exist in every country. So the Chinese, the China towns win over Japan towns. Sorry. So we just we we're not just going to tell jokes, but we will talk about the precepts of Kala Chakra. The precepts teachings are very dry, but there are rules in the countries or in the families and Kala Chakra also has their own rules or precepts or precepts in Mahayana Buddhism, Tantrayana Buddhism or in any sects. The Kala Chakra precepts the first time I gave the Kala Chakra Dharma teaching was in Hong Kong in the year 2000. And at that time, Vajra Master Lian Han had uh, given the teaching of all the Kala Chakra precepts, but he did not explain. And today, I will provide the explanations for these precepts. But the teaching on precepts are typically very dry. That's why I share some jokes first. And you would not fall asleep. Otherwise, if you just listen to the precepts, you would all fall asleep. This joke is not that funny. The husband accompanied the wife to win grocery shopping. It's something that needs to be avoided and met the mistress. And then when he accompanied the mistress, they met the uh, sister-in-law. And uh, when he's um, becoming hot with the maid and was su was seen by the sun, this should be avoided. When you're meeting with the friend from the internet, it turned out to be his own wife. This should be avoided. These are all precepts. Precepts or the rules are something we have to follow. So today at this Kala Chakra ceremony in London, we will talk about the precepts. Like what the joke said earlier, those are embarrassments that needs to be avoided. That the rules that we should observe. And the 14 downfall precepts of Tantrayana. And what I will talk about is very different from what was written in the book. This book is about the precepts. 
that what was written in this book is similar to what I talk about. So the basic of the precepts are the same, but the applications are different. So because when they heard that I will be teaching the precepts, you prepare the book, and if I just recite from the book, then that would be the end of it. But it shouldn't be like that. So, like today in the Kala Chakra ceremony, if you are free and staying at home, but instead today, flying here, the closest it would only take one or two hours from the different parts of Europe. They only take one or two hours to fly here. But if you're a Tribuda school student or disciple, and instead you stayed at home, that means you are berating the Dharma teaching and that you are violating this precept. Because if the lineage the Guru is giving Dharma teaching here and you only live in about that distance, you have to come unless you have something very important that you have to attend to. But truly, in this world, there isn't anything so important that you cannot make it. Because on earth, there isn't anything so important. There is nothing more important than transcending life and death. Because by receiving this Dharma teaching, you can transcend life and death. What else could be more important than this? But of course, if you're in the hospital and you cannot get out of bed, then that would be important enough. So if you cannot make it here because of this issue, important issue, that would be fine. But if you can, you are able to make it, but you're not here, then you are violating the precept. So disrespectful, berating, or slandering the root guru. That's the first precept. Undermining. Sometimes this happens uh, within the family or within people of the same field. or among competitors, that's human nature, to undermine each other, or between different religious schools, or the different sects within Buddhism, that you don't interact with each other, that this school will not interact with other school. This happened. This happens even in Taiwan, within the four great Buddhist schools there, and 
see the four major Buddhist sects in Taiwan. But they don't interact with each other. See if from the Ziji school talk about the school at the different Buddhist school, then that would not be accepted in Taiwan. But a positive competition is fine, but not the negative competition, because they are all about Buddhist teachings. We should get along better with each other. Like what I said yesterday, A scolded B, you're a pig, and B scolded A, you're a pig. And the teacher said, both of you are pigs, so you should get along better with each other. Now we're all Buddhist followers, so we should get along with each other. We should live in harmony with each other. So Buddhists, Christians, Catholics, we should treat each other all equally and generate compassion and cultivate to go to the better realm. So we shouldn't criticize each other, especially when we are all pigs. We should get along even better. Like in the Buddhist world, I don't dare to call myself a sage or a saint. Although I'm a founder of this school, and we all like to refer ourselves as this or that. And when they come from the Fo Guang school, they would call it that they are the Fo Guang people. But uh, we don't call ourselves the True Buddha people. <laughs> like the two Chinas, mainland China and Taiwan, they were both the Republic of China. So we should live in harmony with each other. We should grow together and prosper together. And we should have a common faith, common interest. So as Buddhists, uh, we should undermine each other and more importantly we should never berate or slander our own lineage with Guru. So we should not berate other people especially. More importantly we should never berate our root Guru. That's the precept number one. Number two, we should never speak faults of the other Vajra brothers and sisters. It's about the same as the precept number one. <coughs> and the precept number three, we should never lose the bodhicitta mind. Uh, there are two kinds of bodhicittas. Bodhicitta that's spoken and bodhicitta that bodhicitta vow that you make, like the vow that the uh, precept holders made earlier. You make the vow first before you put it into action. But once you apply your vow, 
then that is action bodhicitta. It's putting the vow into action. And you should never abandon these vows of bodhicitta. It is truly difficult to keep the precepts. There is this joke. They were a very old couple, and they were about to, to have a wedding anniversary. And uh, after dinner, uh, the wife told the husband, we are about, uh, we, are to, we have been together to almost 75 years. And I always have this question, how come our children, how come one of our children, they have 10 children, nine of them look alike, but one of them look very different. So we are already so old and I would not be afraid of the truth. Why this one child is different from the other children? So the husband asked this question and the wife answered apologetically. Yes, this was not your child and the husband could not accept the reality and ask, who was he then? Who was the father? Who was that shameless father? And the wife was silent for a long time and finally got up the courage to answer, this father was you. The other nine was not him. The father of the other nine children was not him. So it's hard to, to keep the precept. She only kept the precept for the last child. So finally, she got on the right path. So like Simo said, <coughs> that this is fine, that's fine, everything is right. So I'm very grateful to Simo. The master is perfect, right? So today, I'm coming to England. I just got to know that England is a free country. But only now I know that from now on I will be free. So it is good that I'm set free, that I don't have to worry so much about the rules. Now after coming to England, I just know that I will be free from now on. That after 17, I will live a happily ever after life. <laughs> oh well, I still have to abide by the precepts. And number four, the slander, the sutras, 
and Mahayana Buddhism, the precepts were spoken by Buddha Sakyamuni. So we should not slander uh, the words spoken or the teachings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. We can provide comments or our opinions, but these days when people arrive, they use such a rude remarks. That's not a good thing. You can provide your opinions, your remarks, or your comments in the right way, but please, please do not use a rude words or personal attack. That's not good. So, for the Buddhist sutras or writings of the sages, we should not slander them, should not berate them. And the next precept is never to reveal tantric teachings to the unripened pr practitioners because immature practitioners they still don't understand anything and if you teach the profound tantra that's not good for beginners or novice practitioners to not teach them the highest or the profound teachings because may, it may create a skepticism or problems in their minds. It could not be taught to them. Why? Like the enlightenment words cannot be spoken because they may not understand it or they may be rated. Like in Toronto, we have the greatest tributary temple in North America. It is called the Jin In Temple. Master Lian Xiong was there at that temple in Toronto. And there was the Tao the Yamantaka Heruka very majestic. Yamandaka. So in the Buddhist statue, that thing was also exposed. But most people seeing that, <coughs> but the master in Wong, when he saw that thing of the Yamantaka, he said, oh gosh, even the Maja Master was shocked, not to mention ordinary people. <coughs> so when I saw the photo of the Yamantaka Heruka of the Jinyin Temple, now that forest wrap was enclosed. So now you cannot see it anymore. Maybe you do not know what was that Yamataka of Yamataka. Yamataka also means the great wrathful one. So the highest profound tantra is only uh, taught to the mature or ripened practitioners. 
otherwise to the unripened practitioners they would not even understand what is that wrathful thing of the wrathful one so the next precept uh, we should not undermine our body although having a body you would be able to feel you would have sensation the five aggregates it's the forms perceptions thinking the action and the consciousness so these are the five aggregates so you can experience these five aggregates but you should not despise them that's why in Buddhism we say that you cannot commit suicide because by committing suicide you're killing your own Buddha nature instead you need to utilize your own body to attain Buddhahood to realize empty nature because empty nature is close to the Buddha nature so you should also never abandon or reject your own empty nature You should not befriend the deviant peop deviant friends. So in Chinese we say that if you are close to the black ink you will become black. Or if you're close to the red color you will become red so it means that if you're close to a certain people with a certain temperament then you will uh, become like that like the pickle when you place the vegetable into the pickling pot and we make an analogy of the pickling seasonings as the society then any vegetable that is being put into the pickling pot would taste the same you will become a pickle so we should not be contaminated by this society you know like gambling or drugs intoxicants if you befriend people on drug that in the future it's very likely that you would also become one of them so that's why it is a precept to keep a distance from people of the deviant path candy is it male or female nobody could answer that the answer candy is a female so by the candy is female because the candy can attract ants so that's why Mm -hmm. 
And next one. When you are uh, uh, pushing some more people to leave, like to the school, or if uh, from this school, from the Foguang school, they said uh, the Zhuqi school that uh, that school is not good because they only uh, do the charitable work but actually everything is fine or when you are trying to follow the tantric practices and someone was trying to discourage you from that but actually they are all the same it depending on your affinity so you should not um, back mouth uh, all spiritual cultivation and someone said <coughs> that if someone says that I am a tributary school disciple forever then usually after they made such a statement they would leave tributary school because that's the impermanence because anything can change if someone made a statement that I would never leave Grandmaster Lu please believe me and once someone made such a boastful statement not long after that they left so that's why even people can change. So the judges also like uh, real proofs. They don't like just to listen to people's statements. So even when they make the vows in front of the judge, they raise the right hand or left hand? Right hand. <coughs> sometimes when they ask me to raise my hand to make a vow, sometimes I raise my left hand. I'm not sure whether it's the left or right hand. But if you don't keep to your own vows, when you take a vow, you have to keep the vow. But there are many people don't, who don't keep the vows. Like in front of a minister, when he asks, do you love your wife? Do you love your girlfriend? Of course he said yes and ask the woman, the lady, do you love your boyfriend, you are about to get married? And they both said yes, in front of God. But at the end, they got divorced. So they violated their vows. So the divorce rate was so high, they are all violating their own vows. Because of impermanence, like in Tantric Buddhism, then you violated this 14 bound root good done false. You have to keep your vows and you should never slander that you're boasting yourself but you're berating others. And you cannot berate or slander women that's especially stressed in Tetric Buddhism.
because in Tantrayana, women are very, very important. This joke has nothing to do with vows, but with cause and effect. Uh, it's snowing in the sky, and when the snow reaches the ground, it becomes rain. This is a poem that I was thinking of the snow of the past. And the student replied that the food after eaten, it's become uh, the, uh, the poo. So uh, rather than eating the food, perhaps we should just eat poo. So that's talking about changes. And human's heart, too, changes all the time. So that's why the judge, uh, for the oral statements made by the witnesses, they could say yes, and the, ne the next day no, or vice versa, yes or no, and they're changing all the time. That's why you should never believe words. You should never believe the words spoken. That's why the judges prefer to have a real witness or the things as witnesses. Especially, uh, never believe words of women, actually also of men, both. So, that's how it is, but in Tantrayana, we have to keep our own vows. Never slander the master. But there was a statement written by an educated man. That women are women are the heavens of lies. Hmm? And someone also wrote, "Never trust beautiful women." The more beautiful they are, the better they are at lying. And there was a great philosopher that wrote, Never trust women, they lie. And there was a Japanese that wrote, The Tokugawa, they, they are three heroes in Japan. When Tokugawa won, there was a slogan in that family, never listen to the words of women. Thank you. 
there was this the statement in the family in Japan, the Tokugawa, if you don't believe it, you went to Osaka, Japan. And check the history of this Tokugawa family. They would say that never listen to the words of women. So that's the great shogun of Japan. And also in China, they always said that women should not get involved in government or politics. So I have given, I have spoken for one hour. So I just covered the 14 primary root downfalls and the rest. I feel hurried now. And we should also keep the eight basic precepts. So praising yourself and berating others. And uh, you like uh, people that have money. So if you have money, then you can donate money. Otherwise, you can give Dharma teachings. Or you cannot forgive people who are repenting. If someone repent, then you should forgive them. So you abandon the Mahayana or the great vehicle practices and instead go to the small vehicle practices. If there is a thief like to this temple and then carry away the the money, that's not good. You should not steal uh, belongings to the temple, or you should not steal uh, items of the three jewels. You can. You should not steal the clothes of the monks or the nuns, the hats, clothes. And you should also ab abide by the precepts for the five severe killing precepts. Never killing a father, killing a mother, harming a Buddha's body, or just creating discords in a Sangha. Like with the 500 monks and nuns, and you create the schools, divide them into different sections. That's not good. That's a five heinous deeds: killing a father, a mother, or hut. or harming, or causing a Buddha to bleed and creating a discord within a Sangha. And you cannot have an improper thinking. Or 
how you destroy the temples or the idols of the temples. Uh, you should not say the enlightenment. And you should not have uh, improper opinion or proper mindset. You should not encourage others to abandon their precepts. You cannot slander the Hinayana Buddhism because Hinayana focuses on precepts. Or if you claim that you have attainments when you still do not have attainments, or so you have gained enlightenment, but in fact you are not enlightened. Like when you encounter a thief, or you accept a bad or you undermine all the precepts and the rules, or you just, everything is for your, yourself, but never for others. Because bodhisattvas should focus on others. You, but if you, everything is only for yourself and forsaking others, that's not acceptable. So when the boat is sinking and the captain asks, so who can pray to God? And someone raised their hand and the rest 36 people because there are only 36 uh, lifesavers, so the one that could pray is stay on the boat. But you should not forsake others. The captain should stay by the boat. That the captain stays with the boat even when the boat sings. That everyone else could have the lifesavers except the captain. Then he would be a bodhisattva. And the uh, 25 conducts, so many of them. The primary basic precepts killing, stealing, engaging in sexual misconduct, not telling the truth, and being intoxicated. The secondary precepts, gambling, earning a living through unvirtuous means, reading or distributing evil materials, caring for the purpose of praying, believing in deviant teachings, and five severe killing, ill deeds, killing a man, a woman, a baby, a cow, and destroying Buddhas or Buddha statues and temples. And the second prohibitive conducts are gambling, earning a living through unrighteous means, creating discord, and eating impure meat. What does that mean? Today at the hotel, They eat, they eat blood. Uh, 
blood is impure, is unclean. That in Tantrayana, blood is considered unclean. But Master Lin Chi ate that. So uh, that can be fixed. So in Tantrayana, you are not allowed to eat unclean meat, unclean food. You cannot kill yourself, but you cannot see the killing, you cannot hear the killing, and you cannot have it killed for yourself. So you kill yourself, you hear it kill, or you see it kill. That's not right. That's not good. And five secondary ill deeds, it's okay not to believe in Buddhism. You can believe in other religions. That's a small evil deed. You cannot be angry. You are not allowed to be angry. If you flee into rage, that's not allowed. And anger includes anger toward friends, toward religion, not believing in Buddhism, and also lies. Lies are very common. That's a small evil deed. A lot of people lie. And then the five deserves ill deeds. Desire toward beauty or beautiful sounds or nice fragrances, good taste or touch. So beautiful look, beautiful sounds, nice smells, good taste, touch. Those are considered small evil deeds, minor. So many precepts. Now we should speed up. Mudras are very profound in Tantrayana. So if you make use of them improperly, it's not right. Oh, for the consort in Tantra practices are very important. They should have good body, body odor, good smell of the body. Uh, in the future, I would explain it in better, explain it better. So, if you're not qualified to practice concentration, you have to go step by step. If you're not qualified uh, for the highest yoga tantric practice, and you, you are not allowed to argue in a ceremony, like today, that's improper behavior. So if you give an answer that shakes the faith of a practitioner, so sometimes when the master talks and they make the, the hearer lose faith, that's not right. You should not stay at the Hinayana practitioner's home 
for more than seven, seven days. So that means if you befriend a Hinayana practitioner, you would be influenced. And if you don't practice qi, or the vital energy, if you're a yogi, then you should practice qi. But if you claim yourself to be a yogi, but you don't practice qi, then that's not allowed. Or if someone don't believe in Tantrayana, you give a teaching on tantric practice that's not right. Uh, you should be close to the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, to the Bodhisattvas, to the Yidam, to the Root Guru, and every tantric practice. We should be close to them, or even unite with them. But when in your tantric practice you're not in complete union, it's acceptable to be close or to be in union. But if you're at a great distance, with the root guru, yidam, or protector, then you're not qualified. Then you're in breach of the precept. And you have to maintain your wisdom, your prajna. You should never reprimand other people. even for their improper behaviors. You need to maintain your wisdom and you should never be a woman. You could only praise women. And in any of your behavior or action, never abandon the right seeing. And you would you want to always maintain your happy mind and you should put equal importance on both the outer and inner practices equally and always be pure continually maintain the bodhicitta mind and if you violate or preach any of the precepts, you have to repent and to gain the purity, to regain the purity by taking refuge all over again. A man wrote a very romantic note to the woman and the woman replied, are you dreaming? Why don't you send your dream to me? He's asking the woman, are you dreaming? If you dream, send me your dream. If you smile, send me your smile. But when you cry, send me your tears. Let me shed tears together with you. The woman asks the man, the man asks the woman, if you're dreaming, send me your dreams. If you're smiling, send me your smile. If you're crying, send me your tears. Let me sh shed tears together with me. And the woman replied, oh, I'm defecating. So the woman, the girlfriend, was very honest. <laughs> So honesty is one of the precepts. You should not lie or cheat others. But if the woman replied to the text that I'm thinking of you, that's a lie.
so if she read the text saying that I'm thinking of you, time is up. teacher saw the student uh, filling in the application form and asked uh, the occupation of the father and the student said oh, he's a governor governor and the teacher asked of which state I don't know that's the power force of Chinese so the governor in Chinese also means the uh, frugal, the frugal head. his son that no don't let the woman be buried together with me because he had a skin disease hmm? uh, talking about consort consort is very important in Tantrayana she cannot have a skin disease or have bad odor she had to have a good look and a nice figure and she walks well in compliance with the tantric requirements. So these are the precepts of Kala Chakra because time is up. I was going to explain it one by one, but the alarm sounded. It would have taken so much time to explain it one by one clearly. So that would be it. So 